Good evening. It is Ash Wednesday, and uh, ashes are almost, uh, well, they're less and less known to us, it seems, right? Uh, I can remember as a child growing up in, in Iowa, not this time of year, but in the fall, the smell of people burning leaves wafting through the air. A lot of places don't allow that anymore, but of course, the burning leaves and the ashes, those were some important memories. Um, Fireplaces, the, the last fireplaces that Kill and I have had and the houses we've lived in have all been gas. How many of you have wood-burning fireplaces? Some of you do. How many of you have gas-burning fireplaces? It's, it's close to half and half. So the idea of stuff burning and making ashes, well, we don't quite live in that context anymore. But tonight we come face-to-face, -face, literally face-to-face, -face with the ashes as we're invited to include that as part of our worship service tonight, the imposition of ashes putting them on ourselves, as is the ancient custom, but in the sign of the cross, as a sign of God's mercy and grace. So in just a moment, the ashes that I have prepared up here will be having a blessing over them, and uh, you'll be invited to usher yourselves forward. We don't have ushers to do this for us. Uh, instead, just usher yourselves forward. Just make a single line, uh, and this could be anybody. You don't have to be a confirmed member or anything like this. Just come on up. Uh, bring your children with you if you choose to. You can even help me have their bangs pushed out of the way or something. But uh, when the ashes are placed on you, and I'll be speaking those ancient words from Genesis chapter 3, which God spoke to our first parents when he evicted them from the Garden of Eden. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. So, let's go ahead and begin our worship service, starting with these opening verses as we speak these responsively. God's word. I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears because of your great wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like a cheap child. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. And he relents from sending disaster. 
draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter turn to joy. Let your joy to gloom. Among yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. Whereas worldly grief produces death. By the sweat of your breath. These are the ashes that we'll be using this evening. We set these apart for holy use tonight here in God's house. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You begin to come forward.
us pray. Holy Lord, through ashes you remind us of our sin and mortality. Grant that this season of Lent may be a time of repentance as we look to the cross of your Son, confident of our forgiveness through him. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A series of scripture readings tonight, beginning with Old Testament reading in the Old Testament book of Joel. So, Mont, I don't know if we can do anything to make that screen stop flickering. Otherwise, uh, I'll just go for my notes. Joel chapter 2. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was jealous for his land and took pity on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And he appeals to reading from 1 John chapter 1. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Invited to stand to honor God's holy gospel, the holy gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you. Jesus said, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing our next song.
again, as I began by saying earlier, we don't encounter ashes very much in our day and age, at least not like we used to. I think all of us here probably can remember how things have changed, even if our lives are short. But there was a time that probably most of us can recall when, you know, any restaurant you went into, the first thing they said was smoking or not. Every theater had ashtrays. Every airplane had a section for smoking. And, and even people who still smoke today often will do it with non-ash-making things, electronic cigarettes and vaping and this kind of stuff. But today we are encountering the ashes full-blown, right in our face, wallowing almost in them because, well, because this is Ash Wednesday. But of course we take our cue from even the people of old in God's word. We hear over and over episodes of ashes and it happens again and again. Job denigrated himself and, 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 and he repented in dust and ashes, it says in Job 42. Daniel, of course, the same one in the lion's den, but a very different time. Daniel pleaded with God, it says in Daniel 9, in prayer, fasting, sackcloth, and to top it all off, ashes. We're told in the book of Esther. In the book of Esther, the entire Jewish people fasted and put on ashes during a time of extreme desperation. The prophets not all of them necessarily, but so many of them, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all of them at one time or another, some of their hearers to repent with ashes. Jeremiah calls out, oh, my people put on sackcloth and roll in the ashes. Jesus himself in, in the Gospels, Matthew 11, for example, refers to repentance in sackcloth and ashes. All of these biblical references associate the sign of ashes with repentance and so also today, this Ash Wednesday, there is this, this solemn penitential day. The ashes remind us of our need for repentance, but our need for repentance in a good and in a wholesome kind of way. Why would ashes be a symbol for repentance? I mean, in some ways it might seem obvious, but in other ways maybe not so much. But first of all, some of the obvious things, of course, to get down into the dust, into the ashes, means to humble yourself, to abase yourself, to, to go low in an attitude of humility before God. Because, of course, ashes are, obviously, ashes are dirty. And so they remind us of the, the dirt, the filth of our sin. And in repentance, we acknowledge that our sin clings to us. We can't just shake it off. We, get, we can't easily be rid of it. It clings to us like dirt. And third, ashes are associated with, with, with death and, 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 and ruin and, and complete destruction. All of which is, of course, the penalty for sin. After humanity's first sin, con God condemned us sinners to death. With those words, we reminded ourselves even just earlier, you are, to, you are dust, God says, and to dust you will return. Those same words spoken at many Christian funerals, those kinds of occasions because the ashes remind us of the truth that we, we deserve death because of our sins. But that brings us to an even more important question. The question is, yes, but why should we repent? The Bible reading from Joel chapter 2, the one that we heard a little while ago. In Joel chapter 2, the reading there says, Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Twice in that little bitty passage there, just a couple of verses, the Lord calls on his people to return, repent, make a 180 degree turnaround. And that call that call to turn, that call to repent, isn't made to the pagans. It's made to God's people. It's made to us. But again, why, why turn? Why should we repent? Well, of course, it's because we're sinful. We're continually sinning. Our, the epistle reading tonight, that short little epistle reading that sometimes we use in our worship services, it, it makes it all so clear and, and puts it so simply. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth isn't even in us. Reminds me of the story, I bet a lot of you have heard this one. Reminds me of the story of the man who was praying. The man was praying, Lord, it's been a good day so far. I haven't sinned even once. I haven't gossiped. I haven't been kind. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't had any impure thoughts or even one selfish motive. 
but now I have to get out of bed. In other words, it doesn't take long, right? It doesn't take long for any of us to get down to the business of sin because we also are quickly dirtied with sin at the beginning of, of each day. And that, that mark of sin is, is just always sticking to us, is, is constantly on us. And so the penalty of death is continually in front of us, right in front of our faces. And so the, the first reason we repent is because we have the filth of sin on us. But the second reason we repent, and really the more important reason, is because God is merciful. We are moved to repent not because God is vengeful, though he can be, but be, he much prefers to be merciful. Verse 13 of the reading again in Joel, return to the Lord your God. He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He relents over sending disaster. Which is why we journey to the land of repentance, not with trepidation, not with fear or foreboding. We journey to the land of repentance because that is where God's mercy is found. We repent because of God's mercy. Why would we do it otherwise? This Lenten series that we're beginning tonight, it, 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 it revolves around that, this whole theme of God's mercy. Lent is a season which we are, which we are asked to take a look, a good close look at our, in our lives, but especially in view of God's mercy toward us, shown in the sacrifice of his son Jesus on the cross. Jesus Christ came to this sin-filled world and he took on all of our sins and faults and shortcomings and, and then he suffered and he died to pay their penalty. Jesus is the one who lay in the dust and ashes of death for you. And all this he did so that you can be forgiven of your sin, that you would be washed clean, completely clean of your spiritual filth. God promises this in a different part of 1 John. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Of course, that's why when we do the ashes on our foreheads, we do it in the sign of a cross or at least a smudge that looks sort of crossy, right? Because this declares to us that we have been forgiven by the one who was put on the cross, Christ the crucified. And that attests to the mercy of God. We are marked with the cross to witness to our world that God's mercies are new every day as we live in repentant faith. So we repent. We repent today, Ash Wednesday. We repent over the course of the, the, these next 40 days of Lent. And we repent every day of our lives. But we don't do it in desperation as some last gasp effort of, of, of what's going to be failure. No, we do so in view of God's mercy. As repentance and the forgiveness of sin become not just a smudge for a little while, but a permanent mark in our lives. In fact, it reminds me of a story I heard, a story of a pastor in a little country church, and he was preparing for Ash Wednesday one year, and, and, and he usually used the custom, a lot of churches will do this, use the custom of saving the previous year's Palm Sunday branches and then burning them and, and concocting some ashes from that. Well, he forgot to do it. He forgot to save those palm branches. It totally slipped his mind until it came to Ash Wednesday itself. And that was Ash Wednesday, and, and he didn't have anything that was ready. And so he was scrambling to find some sort of suitable alternative. Well, it just so happened that the church's Christmas tree from a couple of months before was still way out in the backyard somewhere. So he went out there to, to, to the Christmas tree, even had a few dried needles and things on it. But he cut off a few branches, and he burned them and used the ashes and uh, burned them up and made the ashes and, and, and used that for that night's Ash Wednesday service. And it, and it worked, actually worked pretty good. But later that night, as soon as he had got home, the phone rang. It was one of the members who had been at the service that night and she was not happy. Pastor, these ashes are not coming off. 
And he couldn't understand what she was talking about, but she claimed that she just couldn't get him to wash off. So he tried to wash his off. He hadn't really thought about it. He, they didn't come off of his forehead either. And he, then he started hearing from others and more and more people. And this was, it was on them like some sort of indelible ink. What had happened, well... Apparently, the pine branches on that Christmas tree had been treated somehow. They've been sprayed with some kind of dye or something to preserve the color in it. And so the chemical elements of the dye combined with the sap that was left in it when he burned it, it, it stained people's skin of, to receive those ashes. And the parishioners were understandably a little bit annoyed. Some of them were kind of thought it was funny. <laughs> but at the same time, the most important thing is to realize that there is a lesson there. The unintended but really important lesson arising from that incident was that repentance is not for one day only. Repentance is not just for an evening service at some point in March. It, it is to be, repentance is to be a permanent mark on our lives. And the cross, the symbol of God's mercy, is to be visible in our lives at all times. And so on this Ash Wednesday, during the season of Lent, every day that we walk this earth, may repentance be visible. May repentance be a permanent mark on our lives. May it mark how we live, mark how we interact, mark how we speak, and then we will live the penitential life in view of God's mercy. And to his glory, in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand once again as we turn to God because of his mercy going to him in repentance. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. As our Lord summons us to return to him with repentant hearts, we confess our sins and sorrow over them. Almighty God, we are unclean before you and marred by the filth of sin. We have turned away from you by disobeying your commandments. We have rebelled against you by seeking our own will rather than following your will. Trusting in your grace, we cry out to you, mercy. O oh Lord, forgive us. For Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sins and renews a right spirit within you. His mercy endures forever because his love for you is steadfast. Amen. Listen to this good news. God's word declares that he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In, mercy, in the mercy of Almighty God, his son, Jesus, was given to die for you and remove the stain of your sin. For Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sin and renews a right spirit within you. His mercy endures forever because his love for you is steadfast. Amen. God's mercy comes to us again tonight in this very personal, special way, his own body and blood given and shed for you. This is Jesus' promise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Please be seated now as we, the, the meal is prepared, prepared for us. We'll do this the usual way, coming forward on the center aisle, returning by the side aisles. We do have the usual alternative elements for those who would request them, whether the low-alcohol wine or the uh, gluten-free hosts. 
Uh, if you're not communicating tonight, but want to come forward for a blessing, just indicate that while you're kneeling by having your hand remaining across, folded across your shoulders. And uh, whenever you commune, we do invite you to look at the communion teaching and policy on the back of our attendance cards as well. The meal is ready.
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, on this Ash Wednesday, we thank you for the gift of repentance, being able to come to you with confidence that in our sorrow, yet through you, we have joy because our sins are taken away, washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. May we not only worship you tonight with our songs, but worship you in life, in all that we do. Lord, in your, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with those who are undergoing special times in life, whether surgical procedures and other kinds of medical things, for the safe birth of the Gore's grandchild. We pray for Myra's track meet and for all the student athletes, that, we, that they be blessed and kept safe in their competitions. Of course, we pray for those in Ukraine and the violence and the disruptions that are happening there. Lord, allow there to be peace and justice that is restored according to your will. Lord, all these things we pray, knowing that you hear us for the sake of Jesus. And so finally, we pray together the evening prayer, as it comes on the screen. Good, the evening prayer, I thank you. Didn't make it in there, okay. If you know it, try to say it with me. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And a benediction. May the merciful God, go ahead and go back to that one. May the merciful God, who is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, empower you to live according to his good and gracious will through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have the Lord's Prayer that we're singing to the tune of Alas, and did my Savior bleed. standing because we won't generally have announcements after our midweek services but I did a terrible mistake forgot to remind you the offering plates are up front here we can't have service without offering no but if you brought an offering tonight the, the uh, offering plates are were left here up front for you to put an offering in when you came by uh, at communion time so if you missed that I apologize go in peace and serve the Lord thanks be to God